So today I'm hoping to convince you that spending a little bit of time after class is going to really help you to make solid memories and improve your scores on quizzes, on your lab reports, and on your exams. So when I was a student in college, we didn't have all this technology. You know that, the old days, right? So I didn't even own my own computer in college, not until I went away to graduate school. I didn't have a cell phone, <laughs> and certainly smartphones didn't exist. So what do you think we did after class? Well, I remember being a student in college, and my friend Angelica Sapodia and I, after class, every day, we would walk together, either back to the dorms or to some place for lunch, and we would talk about what had just happened in class. And so we didn't realize what we were doing. We were just talking about what we'd just been working on. But we were actually reviewing the material, reflecting on what we had learned. We would talk together about the things that we found confusing. And that would lead us then to delve into our textbook to try to answer those questions for ourselves. And so replaying events in your mind, it really helps to solidify your memory of those events. And so if every day after class you can think back to the progression of topics that we studied, and especially consider what did you find to be confusing? Those things are going to be things you want to review as soon as possible to make sure you clear up your confusion, or after doing that, you have time to come back to class and ask your instructor for a clarification on that confusing topic. And if you're wondering about it, then somebody else is. And if you chat with a friend about that confusion, then you already know there's at least two people that the lecture wasn't clear for and that the instructor really should follow up on. But your instructor doesn't know you need help unless you ask for it. So reflection can be very important in figuring out what you know, what you understand, and what you don't understand. So if you convince a classmate to do this with you, then every day after class, you could spend just five minutes walking and talking about what was covered. Instead of disconnecting, going immediately back to, oh, to your Twitter feed or your Facebook or your email or even just regular telephone calls with your friends and family. But instead, you keep that time for you and use it for reflecting about what just happened in class. is going to help you to really make more solid memories, and it's going to save you study time in the future. So. The other thing you might do is if you have a longish drive to and from school is you might spend that time in the car, not with the radio on, uh, not listening to your favorite radio station, but instead use that to replay in your mind exactly what happened in lecture or exactly what happened in lab. So this is a really important technique, I think, in lab because lab meets only once a week. So if you don't think that same day within 12 hours, think about the steps you performed in lab, what the results were and what they mean and why you did each thing you did, then chances are you're not going to remember well enough to do well in your quiz by next week. But solidifying that memory that same day is really critical to forming that long-term memory of that event. And so even if you're alone on your drive, you can even talk to yourself because that gives you another sensory perception that's going to help you to really remember the material. The more different ways you see and hear and work with the the information, the better you're going to remember it in the long run. So for example, let's say that you've just done a lab where you study respiration and fermentation using yeast. You can go through a series of questions in your mind. So for example, what was the purpose for each of the five different solutions that were used as sort of food for the yeast? To see their response. And you'll remember you had water, you had sugar water, two types of sugar water, you had starch water. So what was the function of each one of those? Then you might think, well, what are yeast? And remember that they're single-celled fungi, they're living things. What was the gas that you collected in the tube? Well, it was carbon dioxide. That's a byproduct of cellular respiration. We breathe out carbon dioxide. Yeast also produce it when they're breaking down energy in their cells. And then what did more CO2 mean? In what solution did we get the most CO2? What does that mean? Think those things through. Think through step by step what you did in lab. And again, solidify those experiences. So I hope you'll spend some time reflecting on lecture every day. I hope you spend some time reflecting on lab immediately after lab that same day. And even if you put off writing your lab write-up for a few days, if you've thought about the lab in its entirety, then you're going to have better recollection of what you did and why. So good luck. I hope you spend some time thinking about your thinking, and I'll see you in class.